Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Easy Conversations, a podcast about having easy conversations. I'm your host, Ferdinand Dandia. In this week's episode, I sit down with Michael Chard, who's also the host of the podcast, The Theseus Project. Uh, in this episode, Michael and I talk about some of the tools we use uh, from a mindfulness perspective. Michael shares his own story of uh, experiencing his mother's suicide and how that impacted him throughout his life. And until he didn't uh, forgive himself and his mother, he wasn't really able to move forward. I hope you can get a lot out of this episode. And if at the end you could leave a review, I would truly appreciate it. All right, Michael, welcome to the podcast. Uh, again, thank you for coming on. Uh, super grateful for you uh, taking the time and uh, coming here and having this conversation with me. Thank you for having me. I'm really, thank you very much. And you honor me by reaching out to have this conversation. Thank you. Yeah, no, uh, you're welcome. And I think, as we've discussed, we both have a very similar message we're trying to share. We're kind of doing the same type of work. You've got your pro uh, podcast as well. So, uh, you know, I wanted to give you an opportunity to kind of introduce yourself, uh, maybe touch on your podcast and and uh, we can go from there. Sure. Um, well, um, like I said, thanks for having me. My name is Michael Chard. Um, I recently launched um, a podcast called The Theseus Project. Um, and what I wanted um, to try and do was to break down the stigma and the, um, the negativity around men and men's mental health and the discussion around men, men's mental health. Not just the discussion, but I suppose the uh, perception of it is seen as talking about it was always seen as something of a, weak, a weakness, especially in um, UK culture with our football culture that we currently have and manning up and you know keep calm carry on and all the rest of it so i really wanted to do something to try and address that um so i launched the thesis project i think sometime in yeah early january and with that project uh, i based it uh, the name actually comes from theseus from greek mythology and the symbol that i put in for, which is a very basic symbol and just shows the six the, the, the labors of Theseus mm -hmm. of where he started as a young man or when he started as a boy and all the things that he fought against on his way in order to becoming a man and eventually a leader of Greece um, and I think it was the trials of Theseus and I think there's six I believe <laughs> I hope so because that's what I've done <laughs> in the logo anyway um, and each of these trials uh, shows a development, uh, something that he had to overcome in order to become a better person. And I think that's as men, um, we're kind of pushed out the door and well, you know, well done. You're a man. Congratulations. Thank you very much. At the door, you're on your own. You do your own thing. Mm -hmm. And then what we found, or what I found anyway, um, is that there is literally no instruction manual to handling your feelings and you're always led down this path of keep a stiff upper lip um broad shoulders you know sit back shoulders straight you need you, you it's wrong to be weak it's wrong to be it's wrong to cry stop crying what are you crying for mm -hmm. man up is another one which i absolutely detest mm -hmm. so over the years um my own mental health suffered quite dramatically what with um abuse at home um being bullied you wouldn't believe it to look at me i'm six foot seven and a black belt on jiu-jitsu now but you know it's um you know uh, these types of things in our past lay the groundwork for the struggles the tribul uh, struggles and issues that we um i get later on in life so it's mm. so like i said i'm you know growing up um emotional issues emotional trauma uh, my mother passed away by committing suicide um, and being exposed to the body and uh, the constant mental and emotional torture up until the point where she passed, where she took her own life. Um, and then having those issues uh, from an early, early, um, early period in my life up until the 20s and 30s, when I suppose those issues laid the groundwork for quite a fragile um adulthood 
I think there's a description out there called an adult child, um, which when you're an adult and you're not being raised in any particular decent fashion, uh, you kind of don't grow enough as a person and you kind of languish within this adult child framework. And it's something which I think definitely applies to me, but you know, on another note, I'll probably send you the link for that later on. Um, mm. So you can get an idea of what it is. Yeah. I'm actually talking about. Yeah. yeah that, that gives you an overview of where I've started from, why I launched it, the theming of the podcast and um, some background really on myself. Yeah. So no. I would love to hear about you. I know this is your podcast, and I'm kind of <laughs> taking over the microphone at this point. But you know, it, what some of the content you put out there is seriously impressive, and I really enjoy listening to it. You get some really good value from the stuff you put out, and yeah. I would love to hear a bit more of the background of you. Yeah. No. Uh, again, thank you for sharing your story. Uh, you know, again, I appreciate you being vulnerable, and you know. I think one of the things you touched on, you know, whether it's your height or if you've got a black belt in jujitsu, I think we all kind of experience bullying in different forms, right? And um, it yeah. does impact us. And I mean, for me, um, yeah, kind of the same things in terms of having those uh, challenges, emotional, uh, my inability to express myself emotionally as an adult um and then tracing it back to childhood you know i was also bullied but i was also raised in an environment uh culturally where uh, in the south asian culture um yeah. my parents had immigrated from pakistan to canada but they maintained their cultural values and um in our culture men just kind of keep it together and there's no no one really expresses their emotional needs or or, or feelings. Yeah. Um, I was never encouraged. In fact, when things would bother me uh, based on something my parents did, I was just, um, it was the expectation was you just suck it up and accept it, you know? And, and that over time, I guess for me, who's someone, I mean, I do feel feelings. Uh, I'm very emotional. Um, yeah it did create a lot of challenges growing up, especially as I started getting into relationships in my mm -hmm. adult life, I, I struggled because <clears throat> I had this, I would consistently get flooded. Yeah. Anything would happen. I would just get flooded because I didn't know how to express myself. I knew something was wrong and yeah. I knew I needed something, but I just didn't know how to express it to, to the people I was in relationships with. And I was consistently flooded. Um, and then, you know, kind of went through the motions, never really had courage to, to speak up for myself and, and got married eventually. And yeah. that didn't work out. And um, yeah, so that, that... That inability to address, you know, that feeling of being overwhelmed or flooded with emotion, is that something you think that comes from a cultural background? Or do you think it's something intrinsic to men as general? To be honest, I'm I'm not sure. Um, I think for me, the way I look at it is uh, part of it is again being an emotional person uh, yeah. and and being sensitive. I I experience emotions easily. So you say uh, a bit more empathic then than yes. nature. Yes. Yes, but then not give being given that space or freedom as a child to harness that. Sure. Um, I think it was very conflicting, you know, like, so I look at my son now and he's very similar. He's emotional, he's sensitive, and I give him the, the space to express himself. Now, you know, if, if, if it was the same, if I just shut him down, it needs to come out somehow, right? And un unfortunately, if, if you're not, and it's like uh, anything we do as adults too, right? If we're not expressing ourselves or we're not dealing with um, issues in a healthy way, they're going to come out in unhealthy ways, right? And you yeah. can try to numb the pain through alcohol, drugs, uh, all kinds of stuff. But unfortunately, you're just um, delaying the process. 
yeah and if anything that um that dependency on some of um either drugs or substance or mm -hmm. even um a dopamine hit um yes. doing things you know in, in order to get some sort of emotional or chemical response from your brain none of it's going to last forever and that will then precipitate like you said more damage later on down the line or a dependency on having to do a certain activity in order to try and alleviate some of those pen those tensions For i think sure. um I, you, you made a really good point there about um doing some you know a, a dependency on um finding something in order to release a particular tension and i think there was one uh, one that i was close to doing um i don't know if you feel the same but things like um self-harming um was one of them i I, th I hear about that a lot with women but not so much as men i don't know if that's because men just don't talk about it mm -hmm. I mean, is it something that you've come across at all well i think yeah i mean self-harming is obviously uh subjective too but i think there's different forms of it it doesn't always have to be physical yeah. i think you can mentally and emotionally self-harm yourself too uh, in my experience, it's, you know, I won't sleep, I won't eat properly, I, uh, you know, it's like unhealthy habits, like smoking cigarettes and stuff like that. All of those things are self harm, I am harming my body by not sleeping by smoking by not eating properly. Um, so yeah, I definitely agree, there is a component of that. Because again, you're just trying to numb the pain, or you're just trying to avoid it. And, yeah. and in my case, you know, and that struggle still exists. I, I think um, being aware of it is definitely uh, a, the biggest step you can take, becoming aware of it and working yeah. through it. And that's what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, I think after going through a separation and finally coming to the realization that, you know, I think uh, at that point I was 34, 35 and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, an adult man. <laughs> yeah. And I came to the realization that, you know, I spent a lot of time looking inward and reading and understanding myself. Um, and now I'm studying psychology, but all of that brought me to the conclusion that, you know, regardless of what happened to me as a childhood uh, mm. or as a child in my childhood or what happened to me in my marriage, ultimately how I come out of this and how I choose to live the re next, next 50, 60 years of my life mm. are my responsibility. It's my choice. Yeah. And it, essentially I was inspired on my own to really continue to work on myself and continue to dig deeper, go for therapy, find answers, and continue to do that work. Mm. But at the same time, I came to a point where I'm like, okay, I'm not alone in this. Um, I'm definitely not the only person going through this. And, mm. you know, when I was going through it, I, and I've mentioned this a few times, I didn't feel like um, there was a resource or a person I could turn to and talk to. And maybe that was my own uh, problem because I didn't feel vulnerable enough to do it or ask for help. And as a man, I felt like I needed to keep it inside or keep was it that, together. Was that a case of maybe you didn't feel close enough to those around you to actually have that conversation? Or was it um, perhaps something like um, where you just didn't feel you had the support network? So you probably thought that you were going to get judged unfairly. So you didn't want to expose yourself in a particular way? Yeah, I think it was a combination of both where I didn't um, necessarily trust the people around me with that kind of information. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and then on the other side, I think part of it was also the fear of being judged or being shamed, um, which, which um, prevented me from doing that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think, you know, coming to the point where I am now, I think going through that experience and recognizing that, you know, at times I did feel really alone and isolated. I, I want to be able to help others and share the message. And and that's why I'm having conversations like this, <laughs> where uh, I'm trying to normalize these issues and, um, 
you know, make sure men understand that we all kind of, we're all kind of dealing with something. Uh, I, I mean, it may be different, but it, it's essentially at the end of the day, it's the same. We're all struggling in different ways and we just need to support each other and, and be yeah. a voice for each other. So 100%, absolutely hundred percent. The, yeah. um, the, the topics um, for podcasts um, I've been experimenting with uh, to try and get an understanding of what the audience actually wants to listen to. Um, and I think I'm six episodes in, I'm about to do the seventh um, mm -hmm. today. Um, and that support network, I think, I think that's crucial. I think is trying to explain to people that um, that support network probably exists, even when people don't think it really does. But it is there for a, a large majority of, I think, of people, they just don't see it. It's almost as if they don't see the wood for the trees. Um, and everyone, like you said, everyone's going through something. Everyone's going through, um, everyone has some sort of support or an issue where they want it, they, they need some sort of backup. Um, mm -hmm. So getting back to the topics, what, what I've done is I've tried to structure it in a way uh, that I can explain what I'm feeling and how I've dealt with it and what I've come across out in the big wide world, either on my own or through a support network mm -hmm. and explain to people in quite layman's terms. I mean, let's be honest, I'm not massively smart, but I can turn around and tell people exactly how I dealt with something. And if they get value from that, then that's brilliant. That's worth even, even just one person doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, one person getting value from the podcast is, is made it all worthwhile. Mm -hmm. The um, one of the, the uh, one of the podcast episodes I've done, uh, forgiveness, was probably my most visceral, um, my most raw, where I've talked about um, where I was uh, consistently bullied, which is something I'm going to address in another podcast later on. But I wanted to specifically talk about how I was bullied, not just in school, but by my mother. Um, and then the act of forgiveness in trying to come about uh, facing that and how the forgiveness is not just used as a way of absolving um, guilt, or, but you're also using it as a crutch to try and end a situation, end a, end a confrontation, just because you don't want to deal with it anymore because you're not strong enough to deal with it anymore mm -hmm. or you, you think you're not strong enough to deal with it anymore. Mm -hmm. And by exposing my own weakness, by talking about that, I've probably had the most uh interaction on instagram with messages and uh feedback through dms and emails um but from that one post so i think interpreting interpretation or interpreting how we've come up against problems with our own mental health and what we've done as as men to try and find a solution or a resolution um or a way out to try and get our uh, to move our lives forward in a constructive way i think that that holds a lot of value for a lot of people out there mm -hmm. um and i yeah I, i've learned a lot from doing these episodes and i think that if we could as men come together to try and better explain what each of these facets are that we're coming up against and our our own viewpoints on how to interpret these things and how better to get that message out um a database if you will i don't know um, yeah some some way of oh look that person did it this way try this or that person did that, or try that um it seems to be something which um i think will have a lot of weight going forward yeah no i agree and i think you know you kind of touched on it even if it's one person that we can impact that's a success and absolutely and like you said everyone's um like not everyone's approach to it is different and some things may work for some people and, and others like may deal with it differently. And, and that's the goal of trying to cover various topics. And, you know, I think, you know, the forgiveness one is really important. It's crucial because, you know, without forgiveness, you can't really move on and, and you're basically a prisoner uh, in your own suffering. And, uh, and I think the other topic you had also covered was journaling. And I think that most of the, the people I've had on my podcast as guests, they've quite frequently touched on how journaling has helped them 
um, yeah. deal with it. And again, journaling can take place in different forms, but um, just the act of writing things down uh, does make a huge difference. And a lot of people um, have talked about it. Yeah, I mean, I'm a I'm a big list guy, and you can probably see over my shoulder that shoulder there. <laughs> I've got lists on the wall of things I want to get done in 2021, and um, I have um, A4 books of stuff that I've written down of things that I need to achieve and things that I need to do, and just to do lists forever to do lists. Post-it notes. I love post-it notes, <laughs> and this is something which I think is um, journaling is a very powerful, and I think often underrated tool i think it's only the people that do it are the ones that sing its virtues and the ones that people that don't do it can't see the value mm -hmm. and it, it for i think for every thousand people that scream about journaling and how good it is there are several million out there that just don't see the point mm -hmm. um but with, with today's uh digital culture with everything being online and everyone living out of a mobile phone um it's quite easy just to jot some notes down on your phone but there's nothing as therapeutic as actually getting out a pad and a pen and sketching it down mm -hmm. that 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 connection between um actually writing something out that for some reason is so much more um so much more uh, therapeutic should we say there is another word more powerful but i can't think of it yeah. um uh, so it's thera therapeutic about writing it down and recording it in in reality rather than it being digital and something which could just be filed somewhere and forgotten about. You you have a, a book, something that you tangibly hold and smell and feel the pages and smell the ink with a pencil lead and you can actually write it down and you, your mind can just wander with it. You know, the power of journaling is so, so um, you, I could be talking about this for ages, so I'm going to shut <laughs> up. No, the power, I know the, the, the power of journaling is, um, yeah, I, I am a convert. I am a convert. Um, I was always a list guy when I was at work writing to do lists. And I was always something which, because a project manager by trade, um, and a, a scheduler by trade now. Um, so data, 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 and lists are easy for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's something which I do professionally, but, I think um, when I first got exposed to journaling and I think I used a description in my Instagram of mindjournal.com, um, I found it by accident and it was guys like ourselves and uh, who were processing grief and they launched a business off the back of it. And I just took a punt. Well, yeah, it's 20, it's 20 pounds, 20 quid, something like that. Um, yeah, it's fine. I can easily just, uh, dump some money into it, have it delivered, and here we go. And it turned up and it had instructions on how to fill it out. It was structured in such a way that made it easy just to get the thoughts out of your brain and to paper. And next thing you know, I'm doing it verbatim. And it's every single day, every day. And it helps yeah. so much. Oh. <laughs> I, yeah. I wish I could give that feeling of relief. I want to be able to get that across to you somehow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I I agree. I think uh, one of the things with journaling is when you start writing your thoughts down, you start seeing, at least for me, you start seeing the assumptions you've made, and and yeah. part of the problem is when you sit with your thoughts in your head, you're just going to ruminate and and fall into your normal cycle or loop, as I call it. Uh, and, and then <clears throat> you're only feeding the information you want to tell yourself, the negative self-talk, right? And with journaling, I think there's that component when you start putting your thoughts down on paper, you actually see everything, <clears throat> excuse me, everything else that's going on and you're able to process it differently. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, some benefit into um, cognitive behavioral therapy cycles as well, mm -hmm. where you um, actually plot it out and a four point diagram um, cause, impact, cause impact, physical and so on and so forth. And you can keep going around and around and around and around. And, around. Um, and that was one of the things, one of the pages uh, was uh, CBT um, um, outputs and things like that, which I thought was really good. Mm -hmm. And I've just bought myself a book on CBT. So I'm going to try and study a bit more of that and expect some content about CBT soon. There's probably <laughs> loads out there already, but yeah. My interpreter, not a West Country bumpkin interpretation of it. Not for me. Not yet. Anyway. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. No, that's fair. Um, and I just want to go back on the whole topic of forgiveness. And I mean, I know you've done or already done an episode on it, but what, like, I think part of the problem, uh, and, and I struggle with it too, is, uh, again, being very sensitive, I tend to take things very personally. And forgiveness is something that I struggle with. But in your case, like, what were some of the things you did? And, and what kind of feeling did you experience once you were able to like forgive? Well, it's really nice to meet somebody who's empathic as myself, um, who, who's quite an emotional being and in touch with themselves and their own emotions. Um, I'm, I think for me, for forgiveness, um, trying to think about what I did, how I approached it. I think in the podcast, I've shown that, I wasn't very good at forgiveness to start with. It was, I bore a grudge more often than not, and it was mm -hmm. toxic. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember which quote or where I've heard it from. I think it's Sun Tzu, maybe, maybe not, but it was something about um, holding a grudge or something or, or, or um, expecting to see your, uh, your enemy you know, stand there long enough, you see your enemy float past in the river, behind you know, that type of thing. Um, there was something really profound I was getting out there, but he completely fluffed it up. Um, <laughs> but the, uh, yeah, I bore a grudge and I've struggled very much with um, forgiveness. And anybody that slighted me in any even small and insignificant way caused me to f um, kind of flip out. I was very, uh, I was, I'm finding it difficult to talk about it now, but it, it was very much a a case of I wanted to try and do as much damage as possible to the person that mm -hmm. affected me. And it didn't matter. That person could have stolen my parking space, you know, or cut me up on the road. And wow, you know, I had a real big problem with anger and I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'd be thinking about that one but that person probably didn't even see me or didn't even check their mirror for example and I just <laughs> just pull over mind their own business and I'm thinking about that one dude the entire day you know mm -hmm. the, for example and then if someone slighted me if we went to a pub or if we went to a bar or if we went um uh, someone pushed past me or something um or made a comment about my size I would obsess about it Mm -hmm. I really would. And I've had arguments with friends. I had one one friend who I don't speak to anymore um, who used to really have anger issues. And we just vibe off each other. He had anger issues. I had anger issues. We, we loved each other the bits at the time. We don't, mm -hmm. unfortunately, stay in contact anymore for other reasons. But um, we used to love each other's company. And we grew up together for years. But I mean, we could fall out over an episode of Friends. You know, it was just, it was just that, that fire, you know, that brimstone used to come out. And we wouldn't talk to each other for a week. You know, oh, you're going to go for it. No, 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 you wouldn't. And now, in my 40s, forgiveness is a, we are, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. This is stupid. And that, that hindsight only comes from growth. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that feeling of being able just to go, no, actually, I'm going to, I'm sorry. Um, we need to have a conversation about this. Let's address it mm -hmm. and let's talk openly and honestly and put these things to bed, you know, and move on. Mm -hmm. But for, in the context of the podcast, for forgiveness, I, I spoke a lot about how do I or should I even forgive my own mother for the, not only the way that she treated me before she died, mm -hmm. but the the viewpoint of um how I, I mean i don't subscribe to this but the, the, the common societal beliefs is that su um, suicide is a selfish act mm -hmm. um when in reality is the ultimate cry for help mm -hmm. um and uh do i forgive her for putting me in that situation or that position you know should i forgive her and ultimately yes is that something that I need to say? I mean, I didn't for years, mm -hmm. and I bore that grudge for years. It was like toxic from my soul. Um, really powerful that um, 
we try and move on from these experiences that are so powerful like that and toxic for um, trying to hold you back um, and not allowing you to, to try and move forward and understand what it is you want you, you need to do and grow as a human being even if you did go through something as serious as bereavement mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah no i i mean i can relate to a lot of the stuff you said about grudges and and holding on to things because i'm very similar or kind of like you was similar earlier in my life and now being at a point where you know i'm a father and and going through this growth, I, I, I don't see any value in holding on to things. And, you know, the way I look at it is like, if, if, you know, say I got into an argument with a friend, or, you know, if I'm apologizing, uh, that's it, I'm doing my part. And there should be no expectation for an apology from them. Or if they don't want to let it go, that's their choice. But at least I'm doing my part. And that's how I look at it. Um, I guess in the experience of, you know, kind of what you touched on, uh, the whole forgi forgiveness around the, you know, the, with your mother, when, when you finally did forgive her, like, what was that feeling of liberation? Like, how did you feel like, because, you know, again, it's like this weight you carry on your shoulders mm. because you're, you're well, holding. Yeah. yeah. You're absolutely right. Um I mean, I, being honest, and it sounds really odd to say this to someone I've kind of more or less just met, but the, the feeling of um, when my mother passed, considering what we, what I went through, um, I was almost relieved back then that she'd gone. Mm -hmm. And years after that, that compounded into I felt bad about feeling so good that she was gone. Mm -hmm. That forgiveness not only was needed for what the action, the, the act that she did, but also I needed to forgive myself for feeling that way. Mm -hmm. um, so it was two tone, really. It was, it was, it was a two pronged attack. I eventually forgave her um, for what she did. And the position she put me in and that felt amazing mm -hmm. it was it did it, it took a lot it took a lot for me to do it mm -hmm. um and i i struggled with a lot of it uh, mm -hmm. um to the point where i got drunk um if i was out with friends and i'd had a few beers all of a sudden i turn into this emotional i wanted to have attention things um and um all of a sudden you have too much to drink and i just start blubbering as all mike's crying again mm -hmm. um and i don't feel like that anymore and that's just that's just it's only recent and that's mainly because of lockdown um that i've been cooped up in my house thanks to the dreaded covid mm -hmm. um that I've had time to self-reflect on my own forgiveness for feeling so good, and, you know, about, oh, God, I ain't got to worry, I ain't got to deal with that anymore. And you know, that that feeling of, you know, you shouldn't feel like this, Mike, that's your own mother, mm -hmm. yeah? And that, that feeling of forgiveness, of feeling that, that relief, I forgave myself for that. Mm -hmm. And I think that carried just as much weight because that was like having a... Um, that had physical ramifications mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that had, that manifested itself as high blood pressure and tension, super hypertension, always through my neck and my chest. Um, and as soon as I let that go, yeah, world of a difference. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, you know, people talk about it and, and I don't know how, accurate it is but unfortunately like a lot of the f diseases we experience in life whether it's cancer or heart problems or whatever i think part part of it is us just keeping that tension or that uh stress in our bodies right and it shows up in different ways yeah. um so it is important yeah. to release it and, and forgive and, and and again on a on somewhat of a different note i think <clears throat> being 
uh, emphatic means like, personally, I feel like when someone does something to me or hurts me, I almost blame myself. And, and I feel like, you know, the, the, the story I tell myself is, well, I let them do that to me. And, yeah. and then I, I blame myself. And I think part of the forgiveness, like you said, um, we need to be able to forgive ourselves too, because if someone does something to us, it's not a reflection on us. It's not because we're less than, or we're not good enough that people do these things to us. It's their own challenges and struggles. And I think part of that forgiveness needs to come for us as well. Yeah. 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 I think you're, you're absolutely right. That forgiving ourselves is, as difficult as you know, forgiving other people, I think. In some cases, it could be even more so, because mm -hmm. you're your own worst critic, um, and coming out and saying I acted in a particular way with against my, you know, I put myself in that situation. Why did you let yourself do that? Mm -hmm. Well, you shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. Why did you go there? You knew that was going to happen. You shouldn't have gone to that bar. You knew these people were going to be there. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have drove down that street. You know, that type of thing. And that's, that comes into um, a little bit of overthinking as well, which is um, another episode that I I I, I did. My, I think that was my first episode where you you kind of you, you start pulling a thread of um, a thought pattern, and forgiveness is perfect example for it. And you, why why shouldn't I give that person forgiveness? And then before you know it, you've got a hundred and one reasons why that person shouldn't you why you shouldn't forgive that person you've only got one reason why you should and that one reason why you should forgive them is usually for your own benefit mm -hmm. which is i'm just yeah I, that, i'm fine with it and i think that, that that benefit um i've only realized that when i got older mm -hmm. and, I, and to, to quote what um keanu reeves said which i thought was really really poignant um uh, he, he's got to that point in life where he said, um, if people come to me and say five plus five is 15. Yeah, they're right. You know, it, yeah, okay, I'm happy with that. Yeah, it's fine. You, you yeah. believe that as well. Yeah. And that, that, that methodology, I think, is quite powerful. Mm -hmm. In just that you, you, do, you don't have to be right with everything. You don't have to win every argument. You don't have to be everywhere. So you don't have to be all things to all people, and that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. And you can you, know, you can forgive yourself just to go, yeah. Well, you know, move on. Mm -hmm. That's the way I feel, anyway. Yeah. No, I, it's probably because he was in the Matrix. He's got all this wisdom now. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one. <laughs> exactly. No, I I agree with you, and I think, and I think you touched on it. It was probably in one of the quotes. I think what part of it is, you know, like you said, like the people that we're angry with or we're holding a grudge against they probably don't even think about it. Yeah. They could care less. Yeah. And and it's we're the ones who are choosing that suffering for us because of someone something someone did, but they're not even aware of it. So yeah. what's the yeah. point? And yeah. uh, I mean, again, it's easier said than done because obviously we, we have both struggled with it. Uh, I mean, it's something that I, you know, from time to time, it's still, I, I mean, I've definitely gotten a lot better because I don't see any point in hanging on to things anymore. Uh, but it is still something I go back to from time to time, because again, uh, for me, um, I do take things personally. So it's working through it. And um, I, I don't apologize for being sensitive because I think it there's so many positive qualities that come out of it. But I also need to be mindful of the things that impact me negatively and, and work through those. What would you say, you know, question for you, what would you say is probably one of the bugbears that you're struggling with at the moment in this day and age? So as, so as of this morning, you've got up, you've got yourself a cup of coffee, you made yourself look fantastic at that lovely top you got on. And <laughs> you think, okay, now I'm, I'm, re I'm ready to face the day. What's next? Um, but you've got that gnawing feeling in the back of your mind. You got a, a particular issue that you think, yeah, I, I'm I'm still struggling with a little bit of this today. What would that I be? I think uh, for me, it's consistency. Okay. So, 
So, you know, um, I can build on that a little bit, but, you know, I talk about all the work I'm doing and all the, uh, the things I'm aware of, and I could talk through about them for days, <clears throat> mm. but it's the practice and the commitment, um, which I am doing, but it's the consistency I struggle with doing it mm. consistently and being aware of it and being mindful. And, you know, when, uh, when I'm angry or when I'm hurt, being able to consistently work through it is is the uh, the thing I, you know, probably the thing that keeps me awake at night is is being able to uh, practice it day in day out. And I think part of that, if I were to come full circle, is having that grace and forgiveness for myself that I am human and I am doing my best, but holding myself accountable as well to to consistently practice those things yeah yeah Yeah. how about yourself for me um i don't know this this is probably a little something to do with covid really and the lockdown that we're going through um for me is focus i have lost especially since the beginning of 2021 which is odd considering i've just launched a podcast Mm -hmm. but i've i've i'm struggling with focus things which i thought i i would normally blaze through i'm particularly struggling with so um that eat sleep work repeat you know or you know that type of thing that cycle that daily grind that I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I've lost the ability to break that cycle. So, for example, I, I haven't worked out as much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's cold outside. Nowhere near as cold as where you are. But no. it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it certainly is cold here. But it, wow, it's not as cold where you are. Um, but I am, um, uh, it's cold outside. And I, I can come up with loads of reasons why I don't want to do it. And another day has gone and another day has gone. And oh, look, we're 14 days way through February. We're almost a third of the way through 2021. Mm-hmm. And we're just getting warmed up. And it's just time is getting so fast and mm-hmm. speeding along. I just do not have that focus. Mm-hmm. And I need to get that focus back. I need to push myself to work to achieve that, um, uh, capture, recapture that focus. But I am going to kill myself to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Like the start of 2021 has definitely been challenging and um yeah i mean it's been hard uh i find again with productivity it's been i see some days where i'm productive and other days it's uh it's (laughs) basically (laughs) the day just goes by and you're like wow what did i accomplish today so yeah it comes back to that consistency for me uh being able to consistently be productive but yeah um it's definitely been a challenge. Yeah, and I, and I, I, I want that energy back that I had when I was in my twenties and thirties. I really want that back. <laughs> That's something which I'm desperate to get it back. That jump out of bed, right? Let's go do something. I'm gone. Now it's oh god, I just gotta get dressed. Hang on a minute. Oh, gotta go feed the cat. Oh, it's cold outside. And, no, 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 no. I don't like, I don't like the yeah. way this feels. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. And again, it's been, uh, it's been such a challenging year because uh, we're almost at a year now um, with this whole COVID lockdown and stuff. And uh, yeah, I mean. Yeah. I mean, when, when, when lockdown first started um, for us, uh, I think it was early March uh, last year for the UK. Um we were one of the last countries in Europe to do it, which was just bonkers. But yeah. I'm not going to make this a political podcast. But the um, the um, the we're getting on for almost a year now, and for the first six to eight months on the way up to Christmas, I was running, I was exercising, I was reading, I was um, uh, performing, I was being pr- productive, I was doing the best I can for my job, I was thinking three or four moves ahead for my career, and now. I don't know if it's just where um, uh, I've now. Be- I haven't. I haven't grown complacent. Far from it. Mm-hmm. But uh, I've just for some reason I've got a COVID hangover, mm-hmm. where I'm in lockdown and 
it's nothing for me to smash a series on Netflix and eat a tuna <laughs> yeah. fish. Yeah. So, so that's what that's why I'm feeling that that funkiness. I need to get I need to get that funkiness off me. It's disgusting. I don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's your what? How are you gonna get out of it? Like, what's your plan? Um... Well, I've put everything down in my journal. And I read it and day in, day out, when I don't do it, I kind of get more and more and more angry. And then I I wouldn't say angry. Angry is probably the wrong word. Um, mm-hmm. Disappointed, mm-hmm. I think is disappointed. I think disappointment is actually a stronger word, to be honest. Um, I was disappointed in um, uh, my lack of achievement with going out and doing something. Um, for exercise, I've got everything in place. I have all the, I have all the gear. No idea. Mm-hmm. I have all the. Um, I've built myself a gym in my garage. Um, I have lights. It's waterproof. I can go out there and do it. And whilst I'm out there, I could do footage. You know, I could do something else. So I could do. And these these things that I want to do, I want to couple into something else. And I think that. By me going out and doing something, and this is where I'm going to pay you another magnificent compliment. You did a um, a, a post on Instagram where you were walking out in the snow, and you were almost like you were doing a daily affirmation. You had your coat on, mm-hmm. and it was cold, and it was mm-hmm. snowy. Um, that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. I thought, look, looks like I went. That will get me out there to do it. I could mm-hmm. tie in my own personal growth, my combating the 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 struggle against the lack of focus um complacency again Mm -hmm. you know i shouldn't do that but i'm going to um and i could tie that into doing a post on it Mm -hmm. you know look at me i'm embracing the suck i'm pushing this out there i'm doing these things um and i'm not enjoying it but i'm showing you that i'm preaching to the I'm, i'm preaching to the choir i want you to as much as I want you to do these things, I want you to talk about these things on um, my podcast and my content. Yeah. I'm doing them as well. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. So, that, so that's where that you, you inspired me with that post. And I thought, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm gonna <laughs> well, thanks. That. Yeah, no, I think for me, it was also holding myself accountable at the end of the day. If I sit there and I'm just talking about all these things and not actually doing it myself, then where's the authenticity in it right yeah, <laughs> so but you know i feel i feel you on all of it cuz i feel the same like this past two or three weeks we've been going through like uh, what they've described as a polar vortex and uh you know we've had extreme cold weather and i haven't been able to run but i've also accepted it and just embraced it but I've given myself a deadline. I've told myself, you know, in a couple of days here, I'm going to get back to a, a proper routine and uh, it's going to be warm out. So then I have no excuse of, or sorry, sorry, it's going to be relatively warm out. <laughs> so I don't have the excuse of, uh, yeah, just not doing anything. So I think for me, the way I look at it, it's okay sometimes when things do suck to just like, embrace it but then yeah. put a timeline on it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But anyways, Michael, I, I uh, want to thank you again. Uh, this was really great. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed this conversation. You know, I felt like we have a lot in common, uh, whether it's how we've dealt with things in the past or the things we continue to deal with and even the work we're trying to do right now and and the message we're trying to share. I think, there's a lot of commonality there and I'm super grateful that we were able to connect and do this and, you know, support each other on Instagram. Um, It's, you know, I can't, one of the positives amongst the many things I can list of COVID is being able to go on Instagram and build a presence. I've been able to connect with such amazing people uh, and you're one of them. So I'm super grateful for that. Thank you for inviting me and thank you for reaching out. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, it's great to follow your content. Um, like I said, it is, it is inspiring me in many ways in order to try and build and shape the message. And I would love to work with you again on future stuff and we'll have these conversations more regularly. For sure. And probably have a, yeah, a bit more of a, um, a structure to my answers, I think. <laughs> Give some thoughtful uh, beforehand instead yeah. of rambling. 
No, no. I think part of my goal with this podcast is to just, you know, um, if you were to sit in a pub and have a conversation with your friend, um, mm -hmm. this is how it would be, right? So I just mm -hmm. want to normalize that um, and and let people see that, okay, anyone can have these conversations with uh, with their buddies or their friends, right? So that's the yeah. goal. Um, for people that want to get a hold of you, I know you mentioned uh, your Instagram, but how can they find you? At the moment, um, Instagram is the place which I'm operating out of um, exclusively. Mm -hmm. um, but I will be launching the website very soon, um, and that will be uh, the Theseus Project um uh i'm hoping to get a, a dot co dot uk or a dot com but it depends on cost i think with that one um uh, so that we the website should be up soon but you will be able to find it on your googles um i'm probably going to stay clear of facebook i haven't had that much of a good uh good experience with facebook in the past so i'm probably not, not going to go on that but instagram is my food of choice and um Stay tuned because YouTube videos and animations will be launched soon as well. Cool. And That's then cool. on Instagram, you're also at, at the Theseus Project, right? That's correct. Yeah, at okay. Theseus Project. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thanks again, Michael. Well, that's the end of the episode. Thank you again for tuning in and uh, showing your support. Until next week. <laughs>